Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. We're going to do another power ranking. We're going across the border. Obviously, there's been a lot of news coming out of the Great White North, uh, particularly Quebec, in the last five years or so. We've been covering it heavy the last year or two here at the OG. And I want to you know, kind of quickly give an update on where the Rizzuto Mafia stands right now, the Rizzuto crime family. Um, they've been in quite embattled, beleaguered the last five years, um, more so in the last two. Uh, and then I'm going to do a top 10 power ranking of Rizzuto crime family figures. So it's not gonna, we're not going to talk about bikers or street gang members or rivals of the Rizzutos that happen to be Italian, former guys like Tony Suzuki, who's no longer a member of the organization. He doesn't count. Uh, we're just going to do a top 10 most powerful Rizzuto mob organization guys in the fall of 2024. And uh, before I jump in, I want to say it looks like, you know, from an analytical perspective, people, including myself, uh, might have been too quick on the trigger, pun intended, uh, to to write off Leo Rizzuto uh, and the Rizzuto Mafia dynasty. And just even though they were on the ropes, um, this is the resilient, <laughs> resilient crew uh, has been through a lot in the last 40, 50 years, um, dating back to the, the fathers of uh, the, the second generation that are leading the group now, or third generation in some cases. Um, I, I think, again, I think that story might have been over, overdone because over the last six months, it, uh, it appears that the Rizzutos have kind of fought their way off the rope, so to speak, swung their way out of the corner and, um, appear to be gaining momentum in a war that they look to be losing by almost a landslide at one point. So uh, just if you're keeping score and you're connecting the dots from all of the daily machinations of this thing, there's there are more attacks on the Hells Angels and Rizzuto rivals like Tony Suzuki or allies that became rivals. Um, then the Rizzutos and their loyalists um, being on the brunt of it. it. It looks like the majority of these shootings, killings, and uh, arsons over the last six, five, six months, um, since, since the spring, let's say, have been benefiting the Rizzuto side of this war. Um, okay, so let's, uh, we'll jump in uh, and, uh, and our top 10 power ranking right now. We'll go, we're going to go 10 to one. Number 10, and, it, and it's a good segue, Avito Salvaggio uh, with long time go between for the Rizzutos and the Hells Angels. And uh, he's at number 10 and he's a guy that still has uh, quite a bit of standing and quite a bit of sway and has been integral in pushing things in a positive direction uh, for the Rizzutos. Number nine, Nikki Spagnuolo will be coming out of prison soon. Served a couple years, uh, hardcore Leo uh, Rizzuto loyalist and will be looked at uh, as a critical figure in in uh fighting this war when he gets out of prison allegedly uh, allegedly that he'll be fighting this war um not that he gets out of prison uh and that uh it, i think if we do this ranking a year from now or two years from now nikki spagnolo could be out of the bottom 10 and possibly higher or into the top five uh of the of the top 10. Okay, so let's go to number seven, uh, Marco Pizzi, east side. Marco runs the east side of Montreal for Leo Rizzuto. Um, has been um, in the news a little bit over the last couple of years uh, in terms of um, 
attacks on his uh, on his business or his businesses, um, but uh, is known as a um, staunch Rizzuto loyalist. So brings us to number six. Uh, I call this guy, you know, this guy could be the X factor when it comes to what's going to happen over these next couple of years. Uh, Giuseppe Fucarazzo, um, a.k.a. Joey Gator, younger guy, a lot of juice, a lot of respect, uh, bridges the gap between the older guys and the younger guys. I think he's about 50, um, maybe younger. But uh, Joey Gator is a rising star. Uh, so he's at uh, number six. Oh, sorry, he's at number seven. I'm so bad at this. I did this last time. So Salvaggio's number 10. Spagnolo's number nine. Eastside Marco's number eight. Joey Gator is number seven. Number six, Pete Diadamo, uh, the Solicitos um, main guy on the street and uh, has been uh, a very important member of the Solicito inner circle dating back to uh Rocco uh, big sauce or just sauce and now uh is kind of in the same capacity for for a little sauce uh brings us into the top five number five this guy's been a ghost the last decade or so um but is the you know is the last remaining Vito Rizzuto inner circle member uh Francesco Arcadi Compare Frank, you know, he is always or was in uh, in charge of the Calabrian wing um, of the Sicilian organization, which I'm not sure where that really, if it's really considered a faction anymore. I think after the Scopa brothers um, launched their insurgents within the insurgents that uh, for, for the sake of uh, organizational structure and stability, that that official title of a Calabrian faction has actually kind of been put to the wayside. But uh, Compare Frank is, has always been, you know, a guy that his reputation precedes him, very feared, uh, a guy that was rough around the edges, not as polished as, as Vito um, was, but Vito was very, trusted him very much and, and, and allegedly uh, gave him quite a bit of dirty work to do. And uh, you know, his guy, one of his guys was Chet Del Basso. We saw how that worked out. You know, he's, he's dead. Well, uh, killed last year in a, uh, in, in the first stages of the war between the Hells Angels and the, in the Montreal Rizzuto group. Um, and now mini me, who we're going to get to in a second, is uh, is kind of repping Arcady uh, on the street, but uh, even though he has been, you know, kind of like I said, like ninja style, uh, you you don't really see him and you haven't heard a lot from him. He's playing it real low key, and uh, that's probably the best way to play it right now. If you're in terms of personal safety reasons not in terms of necessarily winning the war, but in terms of um, it, it looks like Arcady is doing a really good job of walking that tightrope between watching his own back, but still being able to be loyal uh, to who he needs to be loyal to. And uh, at the end of the day, be on the winning side of this thing and probably come out of you know this bunker style that, uh, you know, he's been in and, and now, uh, Leo Rizzuto has been in for the last 18 months. Okay, so uh, number four, the alleged street boss of the Rizzutos right now, uh, Baldi Barbario. Another guy like uh, Joey Gator, a younger dude that bridges the gap between older and, and younger generations, has a lot of respect in both circles, has a lot of respect with the Hells Angels group, including Joey Gator, and that's why I see them both as X-Factors in trying to get this thing back to you know, where everything's copacetic, um, if that's even possible. So Baldi, Baldi's at number four, brings us into our top three. Not shocking because this is the, you know, the batting order right now. 
four, the Rizzuto's. Number three, the alleged consigliere, Carmelo Canestraro, a.k.a. Mini-Me, um, was uh, Arcady's protege uh, in terms of strategy, not in terms of necessary muscle, but in terms of um, diplomacy and strategy and, and being on the kind of uh, uh, more white collar side of things. Uh, and then that brings us to our final two, um, Stefano Solicito, the sauce, the underboss, who's said to be battling health concerns right now, but uh, is still, you know, he's a he's a uh, lot of tenacity, um, and it is not going to go down without a fight, whether it be with his health or with um, the organization that he helps lead and. He's he's got people coming at him from all sides right now. Uh, in addition to uh, the health issues and um, being a part of the war, he is uh, a target in a, a homicide investigation dating, uh, dating back to three years ago. And there's rumors that he could be indicted soon. Finally, uh, Leo Rizzuto. Again, I, I just want to say, I think we uh, underestimated him, and uh, I think that. If this was a boxing match, um, he might have lost the first four or five rounds, but he's won the last two or three. So we shall see. Uh, please like, subscribe, share, spread the word about the OG podcast, the original Gangsters podcast. Um, check us out on Patreon if you can, members only, uh, where we do things a little bit differently there. Um, not always strictly LCN, although the majority of it is. But we get into more traditional true crime, and then it's a little bit more analytical, not as newsy. So check that out. We love doing these power rankings. Um, this 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 has been fun to do over the last couple of weeks, and we're gonna we're gonna do a couple more. So uh, check it out, Scott Bernstein, OG Pod. I'm out.